and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. Today I'm going to be turning resin pyramid making on its head or to be more precise on its side and it's going to be completely different to the resin pyramid you've seen in my other videos. I normally make them in the usual way where your layers are horizontal but today I'm going to be showing you how I think outside the box and because that's what I'm always doing thinking outside the box you if you've seen my other videos you know what I'm like so I'm going to be thinking outside the box I'm going to be getting rid of the box and I'm going to be making my resin pyramid with the mould on its side and the beauty of this is that you're getting a hollow pyramid with just a little bit of resin it's 80 millilitres for each side and if you imagine how much resin it would take to fill it you're saving a lot plus the main benefit is if you're filling it from the side you can do all the resin effects that you would normally do on a flat surface or you know on a canvas or on your coasters so we can work in this way instead and that is why I've decided to do the Petri style the peasant <laughs> Petri <laughs> the Petri resin technique that's the way to say it or some people say Petri I say Petri you say Petri I say Petri anyway <laughs> I'm doing the Petri style in this and I'm not an expert at that um, at all there are lots and lots of other channels where they do a much better job at that than I do. I just wanted to show you that you can do a whole different technique once you've got your your mould on the side. So that's what today's video will be about. And you need to stay tuned and see what happens. Because I'm not going to be taking this mould off until right at the end. So I like to tease you like that. So stay tuned and see what happens. For today's tutorial I'm going to be using this silicon pyramid mould which comes with the plastic support for when you're making the regular type of pyramid in resin. But today we're not going to be using the support for the main part of the tutorial. And if you would like to buy this pyramid mould I will leave a le link in the description. The reason I'm using this particular pyramid mould is because I'm going to be laying it flat on a surface and this one has nice smooth sides so it's possible to lay it down flat on my worktop. And so because we're going to be doing this pyramid differently and working from it sideways we need to make a barrier and for that I'm using this clear perspex sheet it's like plexiglass this one actually isn't plexiglass but it's the same thing and I'm just putting it on the inside of the pyramid and I'm really being careful to make it so that it's exactly the right size to just fit within the edges of the silicon pyramid mold and now I'm scoring it with my craft knife a good few times I usually do, do it about three or four times and then I just snap it rather than trying to cut all the way through because you'll be there all day trying to cut all the way through and when you snap it it gives it a nice clean cut Now that I've cut it, I'm just checking that it fits inside the pyramid perfectly and I'm ready to cut out a hole in the middle. Now what I'm cutting is basically a frame and there's no exact measurement that you need to do. As long as the sides are kind of wider than the depth that you want your resin to be because those sides are going to stop your resin from pouring out. So they need to be deeper than your resin. And your hole in the middle needs to be big enough for you to get your hand inside to apply your resin and your inks. The ruler that I'm using, I don't know if you can tell, but it's really, really grubby and old. <laughs> I've had it for years and years and it's so good because it's got a grid on it. And 
you don't need to do any measuring you can just line up the grid lines to the edge of whatever you're cutting and it's a perfect measurement ready there for you so I used that it's also got um, a metal edge on that ruler so it's great for cutting I'll put a link to that if it's still available it's a Tim Holtz one I'll put a link to that in the description below so again I'm scoring to cut it now this is a bit trickier because um, when you cut it out it's you can't bend it in the same way that you did the other bits because it cracks the whole whole way along and it actually did that for me I did break it <laughs> and it was my last piece so I had to go with it so because I'd broken it I'm just putting some tape on and I'm using aluminium tape because I don't have any didn't have any clear tape left clear tape would be better because then you can see through but it doesn't matter it just it's just to hold it together because I did break it if you manage to do yours all in one piece just ignore this part that I'm doing now so anyway it's ready and now what I'm doing is I'm attaching it just with a few little bits of tape to the pyramid mold whilst it's still in the casing because it helps to make sure you're taping it in exactly the right place and you're keeping it square once I've got those little bits of tape on, I can take it out of that plastic support and I won't need that anymore. That's the end of that for this tutorial. And I will just completely seal it with bigger pieces of tape. While you, when you're putting this tape on, you need to be very thorough to make sure you're not leaving any gaps, especially on the corners. And you need to make sure it's pressed down nice and smoothly. The best way to do that really is to put it down on the flat surface and rub the mould against the tape from the inside to make sure it's down really nice and smoothly. Or put it back in the support and press it against the sides of the support just to make sure you haven't got any gaps and you know it seems a bit fiddly and this part that I'm doing now really is the hardest part of the whole thing once you've done this it's just easy it's plain sailing after this so yeah be patient and do it well preparation is always the most important part there, I'm just putting it back in just to make sure it's smoothed against the sides and really pressed down there's the last bit going on and then it's ready and then we can start to pour our resin and just to clarify I haven't got any tape on the inside it's just raw plexiglass on the inside of that barrier so the resin will be touching the plexiglass not any tape and it there isn't any release agent or anything like that it's just the raw plexiglass the main reason for this video was to show you how to make your pyramid hollow and to apply your resin in a completely new and different way and it really opens up a whole new world of possibilities for your resin pyramids. So the I don't want you to judge me on the results of this um, Petri technique I'm going to use because it's just to show how you can use this idea really. It's not for showing you how to do the Petri uh, method. I'm not an expert by any means and I would recommend a fantastic lady and her channel which is called Miriam's Nature. She does amazing work with inks to make pe her Petri dishes and Petri coasters and all sorts of different Petri arts. But like I said, I'm no expert and um, yeah, this is just this is just to show you how you can do something completely different with your resin pyramids by using this sideways method. I have poured in 80 millilitres of my total cast resin and I just need to get rid of the bubbles. I'm only applying a little bit of heat from my heat gun because I don't want to damage the mould by overheating it. That is That can be a problem with silicon moulds, you do need to be careful so give it a blast of hot air, leave it for a few minutes. I've edited this so it looks like one continuous blast of air but it isn't I kept waiting a couple of minutes and then giving it another blast to get rid of the bubbles and for this one I've decided to use the three primary colors for my color scheme because I suppose every color is made of the primary colors so 
I thought it would be interesting to see how they merged together to create all different colours. And that was my reason for the colours. I'm also using a Pinata White, which has nearly run out. I'm hoping to get some more. I'm using the Pinata White. And what happens is when you've put your colour, your coloured alcohol inks into the re onto the resin, then you drop like here, you can see. You drop droplets into on top of those droplets of coloured ink and what happens is because the white um, ink is pigment based, it's heavier instead of being dye based, it's pigment based and it's heavier and what it does is it pulls the colour down to the bottom of the resin. Anyway, that's the science bit over because I'm not very good at it. And now I'm just adding some more colour and then when I've added the mo the colour I'll add more white pigment ink, <laughs> alcohol ink over the top and uh, that's as much as I'm doing. I'm just doing two layers of the white ink because I don't want to make it go. If you put too much in you're going to end up with too many white spots on the outside of your pyramid and I don't want too many white spots showing through. So that's what my thoughts are on it. As yet, as I'm narrating this, it's still in its mould. I haven't I haven't demoulded it. I don't know how it's going to turn out. But fingers crossed it will be okay. What I think I might do is on each side I'll experiment with doing it in a slightly different way just because I'm still learning with this Petri technique and you find out through trying, don't you? So my white ink was being a little bit reluctant to sink and I thought let's just give it a little blast of air and see what happens. So I gave it a little warm blast of air and it did start to sink a bit more. I don't know if that's the way people usually do it but that's what I did and we'll see. So what we're going to do now is we're going to leave it to cure. Now if you were doing the regular pyramid you could just leave it for the four hours and then do your next layer but because we're going to be tipping this over to do the next side you need to leave it longer to cure. I leave it a day, I do a, I do a layer, leave it a day then do another layer because if you don't it can sag even if you think it feels ready you can tip it up and it will look fine it'll look like it's not moving but really gradually it starts to sag in the middle and you really don't want that so you must give it a really good amount of time to go really good and hard I was too busy talking and didn't manage to tell you why I was showing you the side of the pyramid just then and the reason I was showing you the side is because if you look through the side of the pyramid you can actually see the level of your resin and you can see if you've got it level. If you haven't used a spirit level you can just check to see how thick the resin is and if it's thicker at one end or the other if you need to tip it up a bit. So it's really good to keep an eye on it from the side view. Right, it's the next day. And as you can see, I've just tipped it over and I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the next layer. Except this time I've used slightly less um, of the resin. It's 70 millilitres instead of 80 because obviously part of that side is taken up by the other side, if you get what I mean. So you do need slightly less resin for this next side and the same with the next two sides. I'm not recording. Sorry about my dog barking. I'm not recording all the four sides because it's just the same thing again and again and again. So there we go. I've done the same thing again. I'm going to repeat it for the other two sides and then it will be ready to demold. Right, before you can take it out of the mould, you just need to take off that barrier and now you're going to see how easy it actually comes off. I'm just peeling back that foil and all you need to do is grab hold of the overhanging lip and that's why I made that the frame thicker than the depth of the resin so I had something to hold on to when I pulled it off. So you just need to grab hold of the edge, pull it off and off it comes. Sometimes it sticks a little bit just 
as you know, if you look closely as I pull it off, it sometimes gets a little bit hard to pull off right at the edge where it meets the silicone, but you know, it, it's not particularly difficult at all. I didn't need any tools or anything to get it off. I just gave it a little bit of brute force when it got stuck and it was fine. And you can see how clean and shiny the um, resin is underneath where that, that plexiglass was touching it. When you've taken it out of the mould, there will be a few little messy bits around the edge where it's just maybe leaked a little bit between the um, tape. So you will just need to get a nail file or something and just get rid of any little bits that are sticking out on the edges. Uh, but it, they come off easy. Just, you know, one of the emery boards for your nails. That'll do the trick fine. Right then, I'm back and it's time to demould this pyramid. I really don't know what it's going to turn out like, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, before I do demould it, I will just say that on some of the layers, I don't know if you can see, but on some of the layers, the um, after I'd left it, because I didn't have it perfectly level, the ink kind of floated to the side and I ended up with a bare space with just clear resin. So what I did was once it was um, cured, I just painted on some more alcohol ink to fill the gap in. So it was a kind of a cheat really, but it's a good w way to do it if you don't want the clear spaces. So anyway. Let's stop waffling and let's do it. Mm, which one? This one, you might notice as I'm demoulding it, it's the last, no, not that one, that one. It's the last one I did. It's still a little bit bendy. It's from yesterday, but it'll be all right. So let's go. I need to tidy up the edge there a little bit. It comes there. Whoa, I'm really happy with that. <laughs> That's cool. It's got a kind of hippie vibe to it, it reminds me of tie dye a little bit. And you can see that because I didn't have it completely level, the the what would you call them? Where you can, well, you can see the movement, basically, of, of where the ink has moved and it's dragged the ink to the side. And even though that wasn't intentional, I really like the effect. And I'll give you a proper close-up in a minute. But I have got something to show you. And that is this side. I ran out of my um, piñata ink for the last side. I was gutted. But I did have another ink which came in a set because I couldn't, at the time, I couldn't get any more white ink. So I got a set of inks and the colours that I've used were in the set and they're great. But the, it, the white ink, even though it's called sinking ink and I, I put more in, it hasn't sunk. Not really. I will show you a close up of it soon and you can see a lovely texture but it's completely different to what you get with the piñata ink. So just that's just a little tip that different inks seem to work differently. But overall, I'm pleased. I think what I might do differently next time is I started with one side and then turned it over and did the next side. But next time, I think what I'll do is I'll do one side and then turn it on its opposite side and do that side. And then you're going to have, let's see if we've got one. Yeah. Then you're going to have two full sides without this bit here from the other side showing. Does that make sense? So you like, I like symmetry really. So you'd have two full sides and then the other two sides would have this bit showing from the, the you know, the edges showing. But maybe not, maybe I don't need to. Maybe you just need to ignore me. I don't know. But anyway, I like the result. And the main thing was I wanted to show you how to make it hollow. 
really easily without having to put anything inside. You could now put lights inside it and I think I will. I'll show you some pictures at the end to show you how it would look with lights inside. But you could just leave it like that. And there we go. So, let me know what you think because I know what I think. I think it's quite cool. Let me know what you think and ask any questions. Ask away. I usually answer all of your questions, unless I miss one. Yeah, ask away. Let me know what you think. Look at that beautiful pattern. I think it's just mesmerising. It reminds me of underwater sea creatures and seaweed and anemones. <laughs> God, I can't believe I just said that. <laughs> anemones, yeah, I got it right second time. Anyway, it reminds me of those. Now... In conclusion, I would say I think this technique is really a, a really, really good one for if you're wanting to have a go at using a different technique with your resin to get a different effect. And also, it's a brilliant way of getting a hollow pyramid. But I'm not for one minute saying that this is better than the usual technique i am still going to go back after this this pyramid i'm still going to be going back to my usual ones because i am obsessed with um, pyramids at the moment and i'm really enjoying uh, making my scenes i've just made one with houses and i've made my one with the yacht and i've made one with trees and i just love it so yeah the conclusion is it works it works brilliantly but it's not by no means is it better than the usual way i didn't want you to think um i was trying to say that this was an improvement it's just a different way so let me know what you thought i'd be really interested to know if you haven't already subscribed and you would like to please do and you will get notifications next time i upload a video and that's it for now. See you next time.